Well, you gotta be flipping my flap checks, guys. Oh my gosh, I woke up this morning and I saw the Russell was up 3% and I said, something's wrong here. Uh, I tried flipping my phone over and, and no, it still said 3%. And then I was like, wait a minute, this has gotta be a catch to this. I'm like, uh, maybe I'm still dreaming. So I pinched myself and I was like, no, oh, I must be awake. And then I was like, well, maybe, maybe I died and like went to heaven. So then I tried to float around and I just fell down. And I'm like, oh my gosh, no, this is actually real. Holy smoke, as we haven't seen the Russell make a move like this in quite some time. But not just that it made this upward move. The fact is, it held, it held the move. I mean, it, like literally in this market for the past a lot of months, let's just call it that, every single move up has been ended up you know, being sold off. And so the fact that this actually held was a miracle of life, let's call it that. And the moves were astronomical in some of these stocks here today. Honest was up 17%. We'll talk about that one a little later. We're going to talk about Netflix. We're going to talk about a lot in this video, okay? Oatly was 11.5% mover today. The Planet almost a 10% move. Beyond was 8%. Shop 5%. Netflix 5%. Once again, we're going to talk about that one. You know, Win Meta, Tapestry, all like 5% moves. Look at PayPal, Corsair, The Chef. I mean, everything was moving and grooving here today. And, you know, one thing I'll say, I think this needs to be said, is let me just tell you this, okay? If we can get the market to ever start consistently moving up again, and there's a big debate if that's happening this year, or if we're just gonna have a relief rally, or you know we gotta wait till next year for gains or whatever, okay? But what I can say is once we actually get this market moving again, like, you know, the moves are gonna be abs absolutely insane. And we see that, like you, you do a 3% move in the Russell, and get ready for massive amounts of stocks to make five, six, seven, eight percent moves. That's just, it's as simple as that, right? And so someday, someday, the market will start coming back for real, for real, right? Um, and these moves will, will begin to get a little normalized. And I was looking, you know, at the public account here today, every single stock in that account was green today, every single one. And I can't, I can't remember the last time every single stock in that portfolio was green all in the same day. Like it's been a long time. It reminds me of the good old days of 2019, 2020, early 2021, man, when it was like you wake up and every single stock in your portfolio is green. Oh, the good old days. Remember those when we used to make money all the time? Yeah, it hasn't been that way for quite some time now. And uh, yeah, just, you know, extraordinary to see that. It was interesting looking at my dividends account here today because, you know, this one uh, underperformed the public account quite, quite a bit here today. But, you know, remember, this account has not been hit as hard as a public account. This account's been hit as well, but it hasn't been hit as hard as a public account has been hit. So that's just kind of some, some food for thought there when you kind of, you know, especially if you split your accounts between like dividend stocks and non-dividend stocks or something like that, okay? No, big tech, everything was massively green here today, right? I mean, well, other than Snowflake. Snowflake was red. Uh, but three stocks in particular caught my attention that I think are worth addressing. Apple and Microsoft. First off, those two stocks, people look at those and are like, okay, both underperform the market. What the heck, man? Oh, what's going on here? Well, here's the deal, okay? Look at how much those stocks are down year to date. Look at how much the NASDAQ's down. Like th Those stocks have generally held up better than the stock market in general this year, okay? And so being that those ones haven't been, that haven't had as much downside, when you get one of these big upward move days, they're not gonna move up as much. Just as bottom line, like if you're gonna tell me like ask any experienced investor, okay? Anybody that knows anything about the stock market. I mean, let's say all we gave them for an example is the, the NASDAQ and the Russell is gonna go up 30% over the next 12 months. And you say, what's gonna perform better? Shopify or Apple? Uh, I would expect every single person to say Shopify is gonna perform better in that sort of market. It's a, it's a big, uh, you know, if risk on, Shopify flies to the moon. That's something we do know factually, right? Apple's not really one of those sorts of stocks. It can do very well in that market, but it's not a it's not a uh, necessarily like something people flock to when it's risk on. If now on the flip side, if we were to ask every single experienced investor, we say, okay, what about this example? The NASDAQ goes down another 30% over the next 12 months. Everybody should say that, that Shopify will do even worse than Apple in that sort of market because that's the way these stocks are, right? If it's a big sell-off, Shopify is going to be absolutely devastated, as it has. And um, if it's a huge you know, risk on market, Shopify is just going to outperform. That's just bottom line, and that's exactly kind of what we've seen play out over time. And look at, look at how much Shopify is down year-to-date. And then pull up. Pull up Apple year to date. It's not even in the same league. I mean, you're looking at Apple down 20 something percent year to date. You're looking at Shopify down like 70 plus percent year to date. That's a difference. And that's a massive, massive difference, okay? Now, Netflix. So, stock had a really good day here today, 5.6% up. And 
it's moving after hours, almost a 7% move here, okay? Now, you know, let's go through the numbers and then I'll kind of share my perspective on what's going on that I think is important for everybody looking at this, okay? So, the headline number matters in a massive way. Netflix only, only loses 970,000 subscribers in the second quarter after warning of loss of 2 million, okay? Now, I think Netflix is almost brilliant <laughs> in terms of uh, positioning this, this whole uh, earnings, essentially. They gave you such a number that it was like, it was an insane number, right? When people saw two mil, they're gonna lose two million subscribers in a quarter, are you kidding me? You gotta be kidding me, okay? And so the stock obviously sold out massively. Now they come in and only lose a little less than a million and people are like, oh, that's a win. This is great news. Oh my gosh, this is fantastic. Go Netflix, okay? And, and the stock moves up obviously after hours, pretty, pretty darn nicely, okay? And so, you know, that's just something that I, I look at and I just, you know, understanding kind of the game of Wall Street and whatnot, sometimes it pays to prep investors for the worst case scenario. And then when you don't come in with worst case scenario and it's a little better than was expected, everybody's like, oh, you guys are so good. You did so well, okay? Yeah, you, know, you only you lost a million subscribers roughly in the quarter, okay? And so that's just the market we're in now. In regards to Netflix, they were coming off these ridiculous comps. I mean, completely unrealistic numbers that they were coming off of because of Roni Rona, let's be honest. When the government says you can't go outside, you can't go anywhere, you can't do anything, okay, so people are stuck in their house. What are they going to do? They're going to go on you know, Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and, and watch Netflix all day long. That's what's going to happen and play video games. Like, what else are you going to do? You're in your house all day. Okay, I can't go to the game, can't go do this, can't do that. And so that's, the, that's where we were at in 2020 and 2021, right? That's not the way it is now. The world's back to normal. You know, events are going on. People, there's other things that are taking people's attention and time away. So you don't have to spend eight hours a day watching Netflix if you don't want to spend eight hours a day watching Netflix, right? So it's a very, very different market now at this point in time. And, um, you know, the, the market reacts like that, right? Now, in terms of going through their numbers, I thought it was kind of a mixed bag. EPS came in at 320, 294 was expected. Revenue came in at just under $8 billion, $8.03 billion was expected. Global paid net subscribers obviously came in at 970, a loss of, uh, you know, a loss of 970, a loss of 2 million was expected. So I call this a mixed bag. You know, a nice beat on EPS, respect for that, uh, but revenue is not really there. Now, the important thing to remember is this wasn't necessarily the best quarter in the world for Netflix, but they still put up a respectable EPS number. And, you know, this has even been a stock I've gotten in recently. And when, I, when you look at Netflix, it's attracting a different investor base now at this point in time. It's go, it went through its awkward time of like, it was everybody that wanted to be in growth stocks, growth stocks, growth stocks, right? Netflix was a great play in that, right? And so everybody flocked to a stock like Netflix. The stock goes to the moon. It was at $700 plus at the peak, right? Now, value investors are starting to look at this, right? And they're starting to be like, at the end of the day, it's a profitable company that's likely going to continue to grow and grow for years and years to go in the future. Do they have that hyper hypersonic growth that they once had where they were adding many, many millions of new subscribers every single quarter, right? Two million, three million, six million new subscribers? No, it's not that sort of company anymore. Is this a sort of company that's going to grow revenues 20, 30%? Probably not. But is this a company that can grow subscribers over the coming years? Absolutely. Is this a company that can grow, uh, you know, revenue over the coming years? Absolutely. Is it the type of company that can grow their margins over the coming years and EPS over the coming years? Absolutely. So it's attracting a different investor base and the valuation is massively different for this company now. It's, you know, obviously substantially lower. And so that's who's starting to be attracted by a stock like this, right? And uh, yeah, so, but, but overall, kind of a mixed bag in their numbers. I think this is very, very important what I'm showing you here, okay? And I mean very important. The company, which currently has 220 million subscribers, said it expects net ads to reach 1 million in the third quarter, reversing some losses seen during the first half of the year, this year. Analysts had predicted Netflix would guide for growth around 1.8 million, okay? And so, yeah, it's not what analysts expected, but the bottom line is the company is expecting growth. Now, not only that, they just set the bar low again, right? So now everybody on Wall Street is going to have to move their numbers pretty much down to around a million now at this point in time. Maybe they at 1.1 million or something. But now, guess what? If Netflix comes in and does 1.5 million, 1.7 million, maybe 1.8 million, all of a sudden everybody applauds that. Like, wow, Netflix, holy smokes, because they brought down expectations, right? It's like a picture where we're about to get in a race. And, uh, you know, it's, it's like us and like 30 other people, right? And you're like, hey, you know, I'm gonna get last place. There's no doubt about it, right? 
And I'm like, oh man, you really think you're going to get last place? You're like, yeah, I'm getting last. And I go, oh, this is going to go awful, right? And then you get like 15th place. All of a sudden it's like, hey man, you did so good. You got 15th place. Now, if you set your expectations that you're going to get first and you get 15th, now everybody's looking at you like, what, what the heck are you doing, man? This is a disaster. Like what, what happened to you in this race? It's all about setting those expectations lower. But the bottom line is the company's expecting to get back to growth, which is a huge <gasps> sigh of relief because no one wants to be in a stock that continues to just see their subscribers go down. That would be a disaster, right? Netflix also noted that it is in the early stages of paid sharing plan. This is an effort it mentioned last quarter that would upcharge some members for sharing their subscription with family members or friends that live outside their home. The company said it is looking at two different approaches in test cases in Latin America where, uh, that it can, uh, you know, inform a, basically a wider rollout in 2023. Now, I think this is smart. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, I look at all, all the other subscription plan companies. So I think about, I think about Apple Music, right? I'm signed up for Apple Music. Guess what? You know, I got to be signed up for a family plan. And if if I'm if there's too many accounts using my Apple Music account, it gives you like, hey, you know, it basically kicks you off of that, right? And so Netflix is finally taking this serious about like, because I know I got you know, friends that, that, you know, they have like 10 different other friends that use their accounts or whatever, right? And have their password. And it's been like that for years. And the worst part is some of these people are got a lot of money and <laughs> they could easily pay, you know, 10, 20 bucks in a month for Netflix. Like it's not a question. Like they got plenty of money, but people are just like, that's how they got used to Netflix. And so it's like, well, why do anything different? And so absolutely at the end of the day, you know, they're going to, it's going to be a conversion game over the next few years of converting people that have been sharing with other people's accounts to either have those folks pay more or you got to sign up for your own account. And every other subscription service pretty much out there does that. Netflix is going to do it. And you know, people can whine about it like, oh, I want my Netflix for free. I want to be able to use my friend's account or whatever. You know, no. Okay. No, that's not the way it works. Uh, you know, it, that was a uh, fun while it lasted, I guess you can say. Okay. No, I actually bought some Netflix shares uh, pretty dang recently, right? I got them at $181.42. And so far it's going pretty darn good. So far I'm like, why don't I buy 500 shares instead of 50 shares? Uh, the one thing I'll say about this, okay, is, you know, that's just pure luck, you know, in terms of like getting it at that sort of price at 181, you know, that was pretty dang close to the lows. Whenever I think about buying a stock, I never expect to buy a stock at the lows uh, or anywhere even close to lows. Like I usually expect like that stock's going to go lower, right? And even Netflix in this case, I was like, oh, you know, it might go to 150. I'll buy some more shares or 160. I'll buy some more shares. And so, you know, I think sometimes people in the stock market think you have to get it at the lows or the perfect price or something. No, mentally, you should go into every stock you buy, in my personal opinion, as a long-term investor, and expect that stock to go lower and expect to buy the dip and sometimes buy the dip several times along the, the road, right? There, I mean, there's, the, the amount of stocks I've been in over the years they, where I went down on that stock for the first six to 18 months, that stock is a long list, including my most successful investment of my life, Tesla Myesla. The first year, I mean, there was moments when I was down probably 40 plus percent, if not 50 percent plus on Tesla shares from my original shares I bought in Tesla. I did not time that perfect. I got in at a good time in 2018, 2019 when I was buying shares, but that was not the perfect time. The perfect time was, you know, in part of 2019, like I think it was toward either the middle or the back half. It would have been the perfect ideal time. To, I started buying that stock, you know, like a year, I guess you'd say too soon. But I was able to buy the dip several times along the road and just continue to build out my position and make, you know, I had more and more Tesla shares over time, right? And um, yeah, so that's just something to kind of keep in mind there, guys. Don't expect to always get stocks at the bottom or anywhere close to the bottom. Be mentally prepared for these stocks to drop lower and lower and lower. Uh, you know, and if you're a long-term investor, you should love picking up shares for a cheaper price. Just bottom line. You don't have to be the guy that gets it at a perfect share. You know, would I much rather buy Netflix at uh, $181 and $300? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, it's about, are you getting that stock for a good price on a long-term basis or not? And so that's just something very important that I think everybody needs to keep in mind. Now, Honest made this ridiculous move here today. Like it was like a 17% move. Now, the interesting thing is, so I don't know if you guys saw this headline here, okay? The Honest Company launches at Walmart to expand U.S. distribution. The Honest Company, a digitally native, mission-driven, brand-focused, holy smokes, let's put all the, the terms in there, right, uh, on leading the clean lifestyle movement, announced today that it expanded distribution to Walmart. The brand is now available on Walmart.com and will launch to thousands of Walmart stores this fall. So, you know, 
<laughs> it just cracks me up, okay? Stock market absolutely cracks me up. Because if you listen to conference calls of this company, we already knew they were expanding distribution with Walmart. This wasn't shocking news. But so much of the stock market nowadays is driven by the machines, the algorithms. And so they see this headline today. Oh, Honest is getting distribution in Walmart. And all of a sudden, pff, you know, who's buying it up left and right here today, okay? Because if any humans were out there, like all of a sudden, oh, I got to get in Honest today. Silly, because we already knew about this. If you listen to conference call, you already knew this. You already knew they were expanding distribution with, with Walmart. And so, you know, uh, if you listen to any investor presentations with them, like you already, this was already information that was out there. It, but so much of the stock market is driven by the machines nowadays. And that's exactly what we see. The machines pick that up and boom, fly to the moon. It, it's so silly. It's so silly, but that's the stock market. And for us as humans, it's creating a market now where the moves are so dramatic on other sides. I mean, I never thought Honest would fall to some of the prices it fell to. I mean, it's a company that sells diapers and wipes and soaps and shampoos, and this is not some game-changing, earth-shaking company. Um, but you look at their stock price and you think, oh my gosh, this is the most insane business model ever. Something crazy, right? So that's a market we, we, we're in nowadays. It's just, it's a very... It's a very kind of, I feel like it's a, it's a very, very silly market now at this point in time, okay? And, but it creates some, some insane discounts on some stocks and it creates some insane overvaluation on stocks. That's the other thing, okay? And we saw that play out at the, you know, end of 2020 into the beginning part of 2021. It, it made a lot of stocks go to some crazy valuations that they should not have been trading at. We all know that now looking back, right? Um, but that's a market that's so machine driven and, and we've got to admit that that's just, the biggest part of the stock market nowadays and it, it creates for a, a silly stock market for these short-term insane volatile moves right no netflix okay so that that's out of the way but tesla is next on deck tesla comes out with earnings in less than 24 hours a day uh from now netflix is a good vibe for the market and if that makes a nice upward move tomorrow that's a good vibe for the market but let's be let's be clear there's there's levels to the stock market there's levels of importance to the stock market right and when it comes to Netflix, it's like, I would call it a little above a mid importance for the stock market. I would call it like one of maybe the most, the top hundred most important stocks for the stock market. Tesla is a top five most important, if not a top three most important stock for the entire stock market. Whatever they come out with for numbers is going to matter in a massive way for the, the overall movement of the stock market until basically Apple and those other big guys report. This is one of those stocks everybody looks at, and it's not just a big market cap. It's 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 the feeling of the market, and no one has any clue where earnings per share is going to be. No one has any conception where EPS is going to be. I don't care. Uh, no one, okay? Everybody can play a guessing game, throwing darts, but this is going to be such a messy quarter. I don't know, man. I don't know if they're going to have a dollar, two dollars, three dollars. I'm, I'm clueless as far as that goes. And I think, honestly, everybody else is. We can all take a guess at it, but it's just there's too many moving parts in this, this particular quarter. So that's going to be... And the next thing that moves the market, and if we're talking about a sustained rally, we've got to have Tesla come in with good EPS, good revenue, a good guide, and say the world isn't ending. If that happens, we can continue this market momentum up and uh, continue this, this, I call it the climb back, right? The climb back up the mountain. We can continue that if Tesla has a lot of worries, some commentary, if EPS is way off, if guidance is weak, if you know, let's say Elon's on the call and he just sounds kind of really pessimistic and negative. We're, we're going, we're going back down in the market. That's just the bottom line. This stock matters. This stock can literally shake the entire market up because it's that important of a stock now at this point in time. So it's something to kind of keep in, in mind there, guys. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you're a long-term investor, stay focused on the long-term. I think that's the most important thing, especially with, with any stock in the market, but especially a stock like Tesla, you know, Keep in mind what you believe revenue is going to over the next five, 10 years, what you think net income is going to over the next five, 10 years. These are important matters to keep in mind, right? Uh, so I just want to say that out there, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, if you're looking to join us in the private stock group, my private Discord chat, and get access to all the course curriculum, learn exactly what I look for in stocks, how I judge financial statements, all those sorts of things, plus get access to the you know, Discord chat with six and seven figure members and um, chat with us in there, research stocks and all that good stuff. If you're looking to join us in there, then go ahead and uh, fill an application that will be pinned comment. Much love and have a great day.